great. And I'm going to just put up, okay, it's gonna take a second on this end. I'm getting a, wait a second, Barb. Again, I wanna thank you all for your patience and your flexibility and very, very glad we were able to work out a meeting this evening with all six of our members, which is very nice. Um, okay. That's a nice number, six. Sure is. <laughs> okay, I'm going to share my screen to put up our presentation. Maybe this is the part that always gets me. Karen, do you see the thing that says, please stand by? Yes. Okay, good. It does look a little different on our end, but I wanna make sure you're able to see it. Okay, whenever you're ready then. Okay. Um, see, I'm sorry, do you see where it says call to order? Mm, or does it still say no, I don't. Oh, it it's on by? the other side. Yeah, it's small, okay. but I see it. Okay, as long as it's up there, because it, again, in person, it's, it's not doing the same thing. I just wanna make sure that anybody who is participating from home can, or watching from home can see it. Okay. Um, do I introduce Elena now or once we start the meeting? Why don't you start the meeting? Because we're recording and we're live. And okay. maybe the commission, if it wants to amend the agenda to introduce the new member, that would be fine. Okay. So let's call the meeting to order. We'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the, flag of the United States of America, to the which it stands, nation under God, liberty and justice for all. And then I like to amend the um, the meeting, oh, the agenda, and introduce Elena Starr. Elena, do you just want to tell everybody about yourselves, and then we can go around the table and introduce ourselves? I'm, I'm I second that motion, or no motion? That second. Just take a vote. To amend the agenda. What was that? We would just want to take a vote to amend the agenda to. Oh, okay. We have um, a motion. Do we have a second? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Okay. Um, Elena, do you want to start or do you want us to start? No, I can say a few words. I, I've been living in Newington since 2017, and I work with elderly and disabled. I go into their homes and I'm a caregiver for them. So it just kind of fit right in. And I went to the RTC meeting about a month or so ago, and they were looking for someone to help out. And I raised my hand, and that's why I'm here. Well, welcome. You remember? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Now I lost, okay, um, who wants to start? Mark, are you on the end? I yes. can't see. Do, would you like to just right introduce here. yourself? Hi. Sure, so Mark France, uh, relatively new here on the Commission for uh, Aging and Disabled and uh, glad to be here. And glad to welcome our newest commissioner on board, uh, Elena, nice to meet you. Okay. I'm Maureen Lynch. I've been on the commissioner on and off for a number of years and welcome. Thank you. I'm Jamie Trevathan. I'm the senior and center, senior and disabled center director. And thank you so much for joining this commission. Okay. I'm Jerry Nagel and I've been on and off probably as much as you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathy Sobieski. Um, I believe this is my like second term on the commission. And I volunteer at the senior center on Tuesday. And, and I'm Dave Nagel. I'm the liaison, one of the liaisons to the commission. Is Kim here? 
No. No? Okay. And I've been in touch with you, um, Elena, I'm Karen Brecker, and I've been on, I think, since I was in my 20s. And I'm in my 70s now, so I've been on a long time. <laughs> um, okay, so we have public participation. Is there anyone listening in who wants to say something? We don't have anybody on as an attendee. On okay. I'll be a Zoom to spend yourself. Okay. Dave, you have any goodies for us? Um, the only thing the commission may want to know about, and it doesn't affect the senior center directly at all, is that uh, Sharon Braverman, Councilor Sharon Braverman, has resigned from the council, and uh, Carol Lance has been appointed to her replacement, which I don't know whether she signed in officially to. Uh, be at the next council meeting next week or not, I would assume probably she will be. Dave, who resigned from the council? Um, Sharon Braverman. And Carol Annis? I thought is, she is was off the council. Hmm? I thought she was off the council. She was, but they, she, and a, 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 a replacement had to be appointed <clears throat> and uh, to take her place. So she's not on, so if she is going to be put on or anyone else, they have to be essentially go through all the procedures and be appointed. And they have to be Democrats. They have to be, in this case, they have to be a Democrat and they uh, obviously have to, she'll have to get sworn in. And I'm, I'm assuming she will do that before the next council meeting. And a number of you know her over the years uh, with the, uh, the, uh, the commission and, uh, and elsewhere. <coughs> That's it. That's it. Questions. Um, how's the budget going? Uh, the budget process has just started. We have not uh, on the council of research, we have not received anything yet, but supposedly um, every department has submitted uh, their requests and I, I'm gathering they're putting it together now. I know the Board of Education had a meeting where they presented their initial budget uh, about what comes to us if there are any changes by the time it comes to the council. Uh, I don't know at this time. Okay. Jamie, staff report, please. Sure. Um, again, thank you for being here this evening. As I mentioned to some of you um, in email and as you arrived this evening, um, this is a different place with different technology. Uh, thankfully, IT department has been very patient with getting us set up and making sure I at least kind of know how to use the system. But our OWL system that the commission approved the purchase of last month is on order and should be here any day now. Um, IT will get it set up and we'll practice with it quite a bit, you know, as much as we can before the next commission meeting. So we should be back at home at the senior center for the March meeting which will be very nice. And it'll be extremely helpful moving forward for when we do hybrid programs and presentations and meetings so people can join from wherever they are. Um, the center continues to move forward. Um, we have done, it's been a very busy, very, very busy month. Um, the winter has not slowed us down at all. Everybody should have received the monthly report earlier today. Um, obviously, if you haven't had a chance to look at it yet, that's no problem. Uh, we did a number of successful programs in January um, to hit all the different um, types of improving health and well-being in, in many different areas, um, including a lunch and learn about mental health self-care, um, a discussion on Relay Connecticut services, which helps those who are hard of hearing or have difficulty speaking with communicating over the phone. Um, we had a presentation, it's an ongoing presentation every Friday about achieving optimum health at any age a class on strategies on how to do crossword and word search puzzles, which is pretty cool. Um, several craft classes. Um, and then the, my favorite of the month was a presentation on birds of prey in which they brought an actual live raptor into the center from the Audubon Society. It was so cool. I had a meeting, I was very upset. I couldn't stay for the whole presentation, but it was very well received. Um, another thing we brought in um, that I believe this commission talked about earlier was pickleball. 
And we've had pickleball all along. If you don't know what pickleball is, it's a it's a sport that is played. It's a paddle sport. It's kind of a cross between tennis, badminton, and say like ping pong. Um, it's played in a gym, and you use paddles and basically a wiffle ball. And it's it's kind of like tennis, but with like I said, with, with ping pong paddles and wiffle ball. And it's got its own set of rules. And it's a great sport because it's very easy to learn. And it could be played at really any like fitness level. Like you don't have to be fit to play. You don't have to be athletic to play it, but it can get really competitive once you get good at playing it. So we brought it back and it grew so quickly in popularity that we are now playing pickleball three days a week, two sessions a day, and they fill up. <laughs> and today we actually had an instructor come in for a pickleball for beginners class, which doubled the capacity. So we're going to bring back another one to get everybody else in. So pickleball is up and running and very popular, which is great because it provides some physical activity and it also provides social interaction. Both are things that are good. Uh, the gift and coffee shops continue to operate successfully in January. Um, our gift shop sales were a bit slower than I'd like to see. And I think maybe it's just January, dark month, and everybody spent all their money on the holidays. So we are looking at, they have recovered a bit already in just the first few days of February. But we are looking at um, strategies for maybe getting some more consignment appointments in. We do do them every Tuesday, but maybe getting some different items and changing up our inventory a little bit, all run by volunteers who do a fantastic job of keeping it running. Um, we continue with our strategies to increase community awareness at the center, where we're putting together a packet that's going to go to all the various senior housing communities with like everything we do. And we're going to invite them one by one to visit us at the center. Um, for a special program and a tour and some snacks and just to let them know, let us let them know what we do. Um, I'm going to get to the NCOA funding thing a little later in the agenda, I believe. Yeah, um, what's well, actually on the staff report, but I'm going to come back to that one. Bus trips are selling like hotcakes. Um, we have a three person volunteer group who plans the bus trips, the, their day trips. Um, a lot of them are done by are administered by friendship tours. Um, they go all over southern New England, and some are in Connecticut, and some go out of state. They also go to New York, like there's a Hudson River cruise coming up, um, and the St. Patrick's Day luncheon at AquaTurf is sold out, and we have probably four or five other upcoming trips scheduled out through August that are all selling very well. Um, we continue again when we receive the OWL system. We're going to be able to expand our hybrid programs. We have them now. We're going to be able to do more once we have the technology to do so. Our goal would be that with that is that whenever we have an in-person program that's like a speaker program or a lecture or a class that we can we can offer it hybrid so you can come into the center and participate or you can log in from home because we'll have the technology to allow people who wish to stay home or have to stay home to do so and still be able to participate in programs, which is very, very important. Uh, particularly if we have people that are recovering from an illness or hospitalization, we have people that might temporarily who might be really active members who are temporarily in a rehab situation or, um, you know, hospitalized. But they still want to kind of they still want to participate. We don't want to lose those people and have them lose touch. So this is going to be a great way to keep people in touch. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up was our congregate in person congregate lunch program, which has been open for eight months now since the pandemic reopened. And it has grown for whatever reason since the holidays tremendously, about 50% um, in daily um, attendance. So we probably, um, before Christmas, we were averaging maybe 20, 25 to 30 people a day. Um, for some, that has steadily grown, steadily grown. Now it's pretty much every day we're getting 40 plus, um, sometimes 45, sometimes 50. So we're seeing that really growing, which is great. Um, we, want, we want people in eating lunch for nutrition purposes, again, for socialization, um, for volunteer work. So it's great, let it keep growing. Um, dial ride continued, again, they're very busy. We still can use a part-time driver. That position has been vacant for quite some time. Um, tax appointments through the AARP um, tax aid program are underway. It started last week. Each Thursday from now until April 14th. Um, we have six to eight, depending on the day, uh, volunteer tax preparers who are IRS certified and trained who will prepare simple tax returns for free. It's really open to anybody by appointment, but the focus is on those who are ages 50 and up or who would have a hard time paying for um, 
tax preparation, professional tax preparation elsewhere, but we don't turn anybody away as long as they have an appointment. Appointments are full through the end of, I think through with March 23rd, and then we just have a handful left in those last three weeks at the end of March and beginning of April. It's always a successful program. We continued it through the pandemic. It just looked very different in 2020 and 2021, where it was the workers who were working remotely and we were doing it by fax and phone call, and now everybody's back, which is nice. So um, that's a great thing. I'm going really fast, but um, we did have a little bit in the, I think building update is on the next part. Okay. A um, couple of things that we did, a lot of meetings um, this, this month. Um, the AgeWell Collaborative is a group that's, that provides resources and collaborates resources around the state. They are partnering with the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities, CCM, to get the word out about services available to older adults. And I'm working on that with them. Um, so there's a lot of meetings and discussion about that coming up. Um, we, let's see, what else did we do? Um, I, the, we were the, I think I mentioned this in the last meeting, but the United States Department of Health and Human Services had reached out to us before Christmas uh, because they wanted to interview us for their physical activity guidelines for Americans mid-course report. Uh, because we have set a really great example of engaging older adults in physical activity. So they have a, a report that they do and they, they speak to different people and they, they gather information from them. I had that interview on January 17th um, with the folks from that agency and we talked quite a bit about um, tailoring physical activity to various levels of activity, various levels of um, athleticism or experience or comfort level for people. We talked about fall risk balance assessments, how um, the fear of falling is a risk for people to not actually physically challenge themselves. Um, we talked about other types of health, such as mental health and mental wellness and uh, emotional wellness and how we address that with every, you know, with everybody and how we reach various people in various ways. So that interview went very well. Um, I don't exactly know when it's gonna be published. They're going through drafts right now and they keep sending me drafts and asking for pictures and things like that. So when it is actually published by the Department of Health and Human Services, I will submit it to you folks um, for review. And that's about it for what's going on at the center. Um, lots of great upcoming activities as well. You have the February newsletter. Our program coordinator, Barb Wilmer, continues to be fantastic. Um, and just coming up with a great variety of special programs and reoccurring regular programs that really hit all of those dimensions of wellness that we like to hit every month um, and really work hard to keep people connected and people active and people healthy. Um, another thing we do have coming up is the AARP Safe Driving course, which I, this one may be full, it's next Wednesday. It's a half day course that costs 20 to $25 help older adults brush up on their safe driving skills and it actually can help you earn a discount on your driver's insurance so it's a good program to have um Wait. Sorry. not every insurance company will do that no it depends on your insurance but some insurers will will provide a discount if you do take that class so it's, okay. if you are over the age of 60 and you might want to see if about brushing up on your driving skills give your insurance company a call and see if they would provide a discount if you take that class Either way, I think it's a good thing for anybody, really any age to every now and then do so. Um, the second part of my staff report is the NCOA vaccine uptake initiative, which I believe I very briefly touched on at the last meeting. What it is, it's the National Council on Aging is releasing a pretty significant amount of grant funding nationwide to municipalities, to um, senior centers that are maybe nonprofit, to other organizations for basically getting the word out or helping older adults who wish to get vaccinated for COVID or the flu, help them get vaccines. Um, and that doesn't mean that we're gonna use the money to actually hold vaccine clinics. All of the health district does regularly hold vaccine clinics in our building. What it's essentially intended to do is to spread factual information to people who wish to, again, get vaccinated. That's certainly a choice, but if people wish to do so, then, you know, um, factual information about vaccines, it's intended to uh, provide assistance with people making vaccine appointments who need to do so, maybe because they don't have access to a computer or they have difficulty speaking and can't call on the phone. Um, it's to provide um, transportation, people with transportation challenges if they'd like to go to a clinic or, or a medical facility to get a vaccine. 
Um, it could even be to put together a team, again, this is not this is way out of our scope, but with the health district perhaps to help get folks who are homebound vaccinated, which is a population that is hugely underserved right now because it's very difficult for them to get out and very few places will actually go and vaccinate people who are um, homebound. And you say, well, why does a homebound person need to be vaccinated? Because people are coming into their house often. Mm -hmm. So it's an important thing. Um, so this, it, yeah. How much money is in this grant? I don't know what the total amount is. It's a nationwide grant available to pretty much any senior center in the nation. Um, the grant amounts could be up to $50,000. So it's a significant grant. Mm -hmm. Too much for us to do at the Newington Senior and Disabled Center. So what I've done is I've contacted the Central Connecticut Health District because they are the ones that administer our, our COVID-19 and our flu vaccine clinics. Um, and obviously they're the experts at this and I am not. So I have a meeting with them on Friday. We are going to, what we're going to do is we're going to um, bring in the health district towns and see if the other four, if the other three senior centers are interested. Um, if they are interested, um, I intend to take the lead on the um, application for this and we will go ahead and do so. The application deadline is uh, March 1st, but we will do so with the input and guidance of the health district and basically how they think that we can do this type of project to get the word out. This is actually intended to have a measurable result to get vaccines in, in, into people's arms. And again, it doesn't mean we're giving the shots, but it does mean like, okay, we, um, you know, we put out a uh, education campaign to everybody over the age of 70 in the town. And we found out from that, that 200 people got boosters or something, you know, so we don't have to, we don't have a goal per se, we can't, but we do have to provide measurable results for this grant. And it's very significant. I guess probably it's, it's more than, than we would really be able to properly do by ourselves. So I do want to team up with other surrounding area towns um, and work on that. And then <clears throat> the CERT team was assisting the um, health district too. Yes, the CERT team has been extremely helpful. We have had numerous <coughs> COVID vaccine clinics at the center going back to the very first days when vaccines were first available to the public. And if you recall, it was like age 75 and up for a while, then they lowered it to 65 and so on. And each time a new group became available to get a vaccine, we held the clinic with the health district. And again, they're the ones who bring the medical professionals and they administer the shots. But we did all of the um, appointments, we did all the logistics. The CERT team was remarkably helpful in that regard. So certainly we will keep them involved with whatever we do moving forward. Uh, Jamie, what role could or can the commission uh, play, if you will, in terms of uh, having a sense of where the money is going, the grant money is going, um, in terms of uh, you know, fiscal, you know, proper fiscal management of that, of that money? Sure. That's a great question. Um, uh, you know, well, obviously we have no idea how much of an award we would get, if any, because it is a competitive grant. So, it, and, and, you know, anybody throughout the country may be applying for it. Sure. Um, if we are indeed awarded funding, what it would do is it would go through the town finance department. Oh, sorry. The town finance department, um, would you know administer it whatever according to their accounting practices that they would follow for any kind of um, grant funding, but I will certainly keep the commission in the loop. And <coughs> however we decide to spend it, again, this looks like it may be a multi-town effort. Um, so we will definitely keep the commission well informed of how the money is being spent and whatever direction we decide to go in conjunction with the health district in terms of spending um, the funding that we receive. Thank you, Jane. You're welcome. think, oh my gosh, I don't even know if I got everything. I always have a hundred notes. Um, <laughs> last night, one last thing quickly, I attended a public forum at the library um, in terms of energy assistance and energy costs. And it was some of our state reps were there along with representatives from the community renewal team, who was our funder for the energy assistance program for Operation Fuel. There are folks there from Pura, um, AARP, DEEP, and um, I think energyct.gov. And they gave a presentation about um, why energy costs are so very high right now, um, including the energy, um, including your electric bill and supplier rates and oil prices and oil supply and 
Um, as you know, we have been experiencing a serious backlog of energy assistance funding and applications. We handle the application process. We are allocated one employee, one very dedicated, very, very busy employee who handles all of the applications for um, energy assistance. We do not allocate the funding. We do not determine eligibility, but she does help them fill out the application. She helps to determine whether they'll be eligible, but the decision isn't ours. Um, gather the paperwork, she holds all the appropriate meetings, and then it goes to the community renewal team for actual funding. And there is just a significant backlog in that for many reasons that are out of our control and out of their control, including a delay in, a, in the start of the program statewide. Um, so the, the, the meeting last night was discussing why we're in the situation we're in, why energy costs are so high, and what folks can do about it, various resources. Um, so I found it to be informative. I do hope that people watched it. I hope that it's available. I believe it's this on Facebook and I think you can go back and, and there's a link um, that you can go and I could uh, find it and send it out to everybody um, when it's available for viewing. Um, so I hope everybody watches it and you can get a good idea. There are some technical things in there talking about the supply chains and things of that nature that, you know, that may or may not interest you. But I think the discussion of resources available and how to get help if you need it is just important. And so we will continue to address um, the issues with people who can't afford their heating bills or can't afford to put oil in the tank. Um, what I've said pretty much every public forum I've had the opportunity to say so is don't wait if you think you may be in financial, having financial difficulty with your utilities. Um, typically, the application period for assistance opens up anywhere from like August to October. It was on the late side this year due to delays at the state level. Um, so if you're looking at your budget, for your household over the summer and say, you know what, we're looking a little short, the winter's coming up, reach out to us or reach out to human services then. Try not to wait until you're out of oil or you're facing shut off. Um, but things happen. Things aren't always planned. So if you are out of oil or you are facing shut off, call us. Don't be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Don't be ashamed. We have resources to help. Do they change the winter moratorium dates then? For shut off, no. No, shut off, I guess, would be more towards, you know, more in the summer or the, the warmer months. But in terms of things like people running out of oil and having a dry oil tank, and assistance with that, we can we can help. We have we have resources, we have vendors, you know, but obviously being proactive when you're able to is is preferable because we can, you know, do a little bit more to help you out in that case. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? I do have a question. Uh, if you will, uh, is there like a stigma in town that anyone here on the commission or Eugene are aware of for people that uh, are either embarrassed or ashamed or afraid to ask for help? Is, is that something that sure. could be addressed briefly, please? It's certainly a stigma. I don't think it's unique to our town at all. And I don't think it's unique to any one age group um, where people, but you, we do see it. Um, our pop with our older adult population um, in, in senior center and at human services, where people think that they can handle whatever situation is in front of them. And then unfortunately it gets away from them to the point where, okay, now we're facing the choice of, do we put oil in our tank and have heat or do we buy groceries or do I fill my prescriptions? So I don't know if there's a, you know, there's not a great way to address that or to, to overcome that stigma other than to continually enforce, like reinforce, please come to us, nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to be embarrassed of. We're here to help. That's why we're here. So we would address your issues of, okay, let's get you set up with the food bank or let's get you set up with Meals on Wheels. Let's see about energy assistance. Let's even get you caught up on your energy bill, you know, that type of thing. So I really encourage anybody who is in that situation, just, just, you know, it's confidential. We help. We're not here to judge. We're here to help. So please always reach out, even if you just have a question, even if you're not sure if you're in a situation that may be um, dire or may turn into something. You know, just give us a call. Reach out. We're always here. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else with a question, suggestion, anything? Okay. Um, we're under old business budget update so um councillor nagel gave an update on the budget process and i don't have much else i did have a meeting um josie is our administrative coordinator she and i met with um the town man acting town manager and the finance director a couple weeks ago to review our departmental budget request our our budget request is very close to being flat to, to last year's budget 
per instructions from town administration. Um, and the major changes really were, we removed a line item to purchase a point of sale system for the main office um, because we have found that the software that we use for um, program registrations and membership data and all that um, actually has a point of sale system in it that is part of our um, part of our system now. It'll become available on, to us on July 1st and it's part of our what we already pay for that program. So it's, it's you know, no additional cost for us to use that as a point of sale service in the office moving forward. So that was that was about $1,000 that came out. We moved around a couple of things in terms of programming, um, to, you know, just to, to um, line things up the way they should be in terms of what we're spending in our various programming and, and supply. But overall, we had almost no change to our overall budget. So we reviewed that with the town manager and the, the um, finance director. And then of course, the next step, as you as we've explained in the past, the town manager does that with all the departments. And then he goes through and submits his recommended budget to the town council, who then deliberates it and sets the final budget in April. OK. Um, consideration to recommend an amendment to um, the I think you're looking at last month's agenda. We have yeah. uh, new. We don't have. We did that. I can give you an update. Um, <coughs> as you know, this commission passed an, um, a resolution at the last meeting to recommend the town council look at an ordinance to reduce the number of members on this commission from nine to seven, so that we will not have as many issues with the quorum moving forward. Um, and right before this meeting, the, James, the acting town manager indicated that that's going to go on the next council agenda for consideration. Um, that is a process that takes a couple of meetings, and I believe at least it used to include a public hearing. Um, and then if that whole process passes, then there's a whole other process for, um, for posting it and putting it in the paper and everything else, and then it becomes effective after a certain date after it's um, posted. So that's moving forward. Um, I guess at the next meeting, I'll have an update about how that went with the town council. Okay, did we have to vote on that? We did last month. Okay. She's I, didn't, I think didn't... you're looking at last month's agenda. Yeah, but last month we couldn't have a meeting, right? We, met we didn't have a quorum. We, we met. We met in January. We were going to meet last week for February, but we didn't have a quorum then. So that's why we're meeting tonight on a different night. A lot of lot of changes. You it's hard to keep track. That nobody reached out. Yeah, we had we were short another we were short a couple people. Oh. So we wouldn't have had our quorum. Oh. Yeah, we just had a short little meeting last month, I think. Anyway, well, I'm but glad we that we did pass that motion last month. Okay. And you wrote the resolution which was pretty cool. I was excited. <laughs> um, so anyway, it has been passed along to the to the town council staff and to, uh, to the next town council agenda. Okay. So the town council has it. Correct. Okay. Um, anything else under old business, anyone? Okay. Um, I have one question about the door counter. How is that going? Is it being used? Is the program no. not working? What's going on with it? It hasn't worked since probably pre-pandemic um, when Diane was the director. So that's an excellent point. It's something I really hadn't thought about recently because it's been so long. Let me get with IT. Um, let me get with IT and I will see if we can get that up and running again. Okay. I know um, Diane had a lot of trouble with it and we were thinking maybe of finding out from the library what they're using. Only that. they have one door and we have three doors. So that makes a big difference. Sure, that's a good, um, we'll get on that. And I'll get back to the commission. Okay. Um, new business, upcoming activities. I, you might have touched on that when during the. I did. Your I got ahead of myself, but again, the February connection newsletter is out. We have February. Um, there's has, is there's a act of random act of kindness week in February, February thirteenth through nineteenth. So we utilize that as our kind of overall theme for programming in February. 
So we have a program about cultivating kindness in your own self-compassion. That's next uh, Monday. We have a Mardi Gras celebration on fr this Friday. We had a wonderful program today. It's not really upcoming, but it was a Mediterranean style cooking demo that was extremely well attended um, and it went over very well. Um, we have some Valentine's Day craft classes coming up. We are continuing on a European history um, series that's been going on actually for a long time now um, with the with the professor, uh, retired um, Carnegie Mellon professor who it's completely via Zoom and it's fantastic. So that continues. Um, we have an intern from CCSU. She is a psychology, fourth year psychology student at CCSU. And she's um, just started with us. She's brand new. Her name is Vanessa. And she's gonna do some programming with us as well. Um, she's more interested in both social work and in the programming component of perhaps um, working with older adults when she graduates and, and goes forth with her career. Um, and so she's doing a, like a, a weekly class where people get together and they just have coffee and snacks, and listen to music and do crafts and color. Very basic program, but it really brings people together and gets, you know, gets you out of the house and gets you talking to people and gets some, you know, combat social isolation and get to do something creative. And it's just kind of a nice thing that she's doing. Um, our program coordinator, Barbara Wilmer, is doing a weekly program that is achieving optimum well-being at any age which is a video guided program. So you watch video on a particular topic um, involving healthy aging, and then she guides, she facilitates a discussion after the video. Um, you know, we're looking again on how we're gonna frame up programming coming up for the spring and summer, um, including perhaps bringing back our expo, which has not happened since 2019, um, and how we're gonna do things, the bigger things such as our volunteer dinner and everything else. So we're busy, we're doing a lot of things, a lot of things coming up. Okay. Um, building update? Um, yes, we had an issue with our hot water heater. Um, it went out and it affected the side of the building where the exercise room and the wood shop, um, that, that end of the building. Um, so facilities was excellent in coming out immediately to take a look at it. Um, we determined, unfortunately, it's a parts, which took a couple of days to come in, um, and they did fix it. We, we closed down the restrooms that were um, across from the wood shop just for a couple of days because there was no hot water, so people couldn't wash their hands um, appropriately. So we just directed people to the other restrooms um, around the building, and then they fixed it, um, and it was fine. So I guess that was just a component of an aging building, but for the most part, our systems work extremely well. Um, we took some precautionary steps for um, the very cold weather we had on Friday and Saturday, um, including checking out the building over the weekend and making sure the heat was circulating and making sure no pipes were frozen and we had no problems. So everything's going well in the building. The window project, which the window replacement project, which I think started in 2019, it looks like it's finally moving forward. There's a pre-bid meeting coming up. It's all being handled by the town engineering and facilities departments, as well as the new administrative director. Um, and so I'll have more info on that after that meeting, which is I think on the 23rd of February, and then I'll have more info for the commission at our next meeting. I have a question, is the veterans still meeting for coffee? They don't meet for coffee at our place anymore because prior to our reopening from the pandemic, they started meeting at the veterans hall. Um, and we did reach out and say, hey, you're welcome to come back. But they said, we like it here, which isn't to say we aren't gonna do any veterans programming. We did do a Veterans Day ceremony and we're working with some of the folks in that group, in that veterans group to do some veteran centered activities um, in the coming months. But they like their new home, so they don't need to come back and use our conference room. Um, anything else under building update? No. So Consideration of upcoming purchases. Um, the dishwasher, is that still in the works? Yeah, that, I think that's on low on the priority list for facilities right now with a lot of other things they have going on. So let me follow up with them. Where we got stuck on that was whether we have the proper electrical components, I don't know the word, the proper electrical capacity to handle the dishwasher in that area of the building. Um, so they were gonna send somebody over to look and I just gotta have to follow up to make sure that, that they do so. Okay. I don't have any other purchases for the commission to consider tonight. Um, thank you for approving the purchase of the OWL system at the last meeting. Next meeting, I might have some purchases regarding the garden because the garden volunteers have started to meet and plan for the spring. 
Um, so I'll have to see if they have any anything that they want regarding that. <clears throat> okay. Um, the next thing is determining the next meeting date and agenda. We, um, so the next the date is supposed supposed to be March first, I think. Is that right? It's typically the first Wednesday of every month at 6 p.m. Usually at the town hall. I'm mean, usually at the senior center, but we've been over here. Um, so if the commission, if we have a quorum, we think we're going to have a quorum on the first, then we'll keep it. Otherwise, we can cancel that meeting um, and do it on a day that works for everybody else. So now we have a little wiggle room because we have a, another commission member. So that's really nice. Um, is everybody available on the first that they know of right now? Yeah. yeah. So it would be here or? It will most likely be back at the, at the senior center. Um, as long as the technology of the system that we ordered is in place and ready in time. I'll let you know, you know, well ahead of time. Okay. And then about the agenda, we still have reopening report under, um, staff report. We probably I can think, remove that. I, I do think you're looking at an old agenda, unless I'm just missing it. Oh, I, I, I might be. I printed it out before we left. So here, what do I have? I have too many. I have I have a program and service report in place of the reopening report because we've been reopened for a year now. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I have no printer here, so I hand wrote this from the last, what I thought was the last one. Um, public participation, any comments I just from? To, just wanted to mention, uh, since you brought up the budget uh, early on, I may have stated this at the last meeting that uh, the town council, and I only have the draft uh, budget schedule here at the moment, um, it gets, uh, their uh, first look at it on uh, March 1st. So, and uh, they don't have, we don't have a meeting until March 14th to begin looking at the different sections of it. And according to this draft uh, copy of uh, our schedule, uh, Saturday, March 25th at 9 a.m., uh, many departments are going to be presented to the council and uh, the senior and disabled center is on that list and it's the third in the in line of uh, at least according to this draft to uh, have the uh, acting town manager present what was uh, agreed upon with each department okay jamie are you available <laughs> On Saturday, March 25th, unfortunately, I am not. Both of my children are in plays for the Newington Children's Theater that day. And my seven-year-old is in a production of Snow White at 10 a.m. Um, so I will not be available, but I will, if, you know, I'll probably try to, to keep an eye on what's going on, you know, between activities. And then I will have a um, member of my staff, at least in attendance. The town manager has indicated that he doesn't need us to present. So that makes me feel a little bit better, but I'll make sure that somebody has their eye on it. That has been practiced yes. for the last yeah. several years. But it's Our budget is so straightforward that I don't have a lot to really <laughs> deliberate or discuss. Um, so hopefully it should go well. It hasn't really changed in years either. So, <laughs> okay. Um, anything else under public participation? No. Okay. Um, may have a motion to adjourn, unless some anyone has anything else to say. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? <laughs> okay. Thank you all for coming. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Thank you.